In this short series of films, we're going to be talking about the impact of the First World War on the press. The press is a singular organisation. It has been a singular institution for many hundreds of years. And it is very instructive to see how the catastrophe of the First World War affected this unique organisation. To understand how the First World War affected the press, it's necessary to see exactly how the press was before the outbreak of hostilities in 1914. And had you visited Oxford at that time, you would have found quite a tranquil, enclosed community. Oxford University has been involved with the print trade since the 15th century, and the university had run various print shops in the middle of the city. However, those proved to be too small for its growing business, and so the university began to build a new print shop on the site we currently occupy at the junction of Great Clarendon Street and Walton Street in the 1820s. And to the north of the site, there were nothing but orchards and water meadows rolling down to the Oxford Canal. Very quickly though, in the mid-19th century, that begins to change. Houses and streets spring up around the walls of this huge printing factory, and the area of the city known as Jericho began to take shape. And it was in this area that many of our print shop staff came to live. They lived there with their families, those families intermarried, local schools and churches grew up, and the result was a very tightly knit community. If you like to think of it this way, almost an extended village. And if you had come here about 1910, you would have found a community that was both very stable and very certain of itself. The press had taken on the grand project of the Oxford English Dictionary in the late 19th century. It had begun to really map the course of the English language, the history of the English language, to an academic standard for the first time in history. There was a feeling that the press was very, very much a part of English culture. And that feeling grew within the press itself. The business itself began to expand. If you'd come here just before the First World War, you wouldn't have found the press simply working in Oxford. It had opened its first non-UK office in New York in 1896. By the time war had broken out, it had offices also in Canada, South Africa, Australia and India. The world really seemed to be its oyster. In the films that follow, we're going to be exploring the impact of that conflict on Oxford University Press. Looking at some of the personalities who were caught up in the middle of that conflict and the effect that it had on them trying to trace what some members of the print shop did when they joined up and went on active service in Europe or beyond, and also looking at the aftermath of that war, the way that those same personalities, those same people, tried to cope with a very changed world when they came back to it in peacetime in 1918 or beyond.